All right. Uh, I don't see Leaf here yet. Uh, oh, there you go. There's Leaf. And we are missing Echo, maybe Yuga issues here. Okay, perfect. Leaf, are you on? Yes, I'm right All here. Right. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. This is our first interim of 2024. Yay. Uh, so we will start with the usual. Um, all right, let's get started with the note well. Uh, please note the note well well. Be respectful of your co members. ITF is built on the principle of open collaboration. So let's keep that spirit going and respect everybody. Um, this general administrator, if you have any issues with your remote participations, drop a message, reach out. Um, I posted the drafts um, in the chat. There, is, there are two drafts we have currently and then one open PR from Brad. So if you need anything besides that. For agenda bashing, um, I know um, Chair's posted that we want to start with the poll to pick a solution, but we had some feedback from the authors, and uh, Yogesh said that he wants to present a comparison between the two drafts before we actually pick a solution. So we're going to um, go over Yogesh's proposal, and then there is um, an open item where we want to reach consensus around security properties of the invitation channel. It has been, um, there's a lot of back and forth going on. There's some I'll not say conflict, but there is a lot of um, discussion around if we want to consider security properties of the invitation channel and what's the right language for our draft and how much it aligns with the charter. So we're going to deep dive a little bit into it and try to reach a consensus on that. Um, so, Lee, do you have anything else to add or anybody has anything to add to the agenda besides that? Uh, the one administrator trivia if somebody could volunteer to take a couple of notes today i think that'd be great um in the note taking tool <coughs> um if anybody can help out with that i think that would be great um brad uh bradford per perfect thank you very much and and joe i'm i'm, I'm seeing two uh volunteers um I hope, Joe, that that was you volunteering to take notes. Um, um, and in any case, just kind of do the notes in the note taking tool. And uh, thank you very much for your uh, assistance. All right, Prachi, I think we're ready to. Yes. Um, so let's start with Yogesh's presentation and then we'll dive into other things. With that, hello, Yogesh. I am gonna share your slides. Hello, um, thank you, Praji. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Yogesh, and thank you for joining us here um, in our interim meeting. Uh, I'm going to start with a quick recap. The big picture goal that we are trying to solve is to allow Alice to share a credential with Bob in a secure and privacy preserving manner, and also with a seamless user experience. Um, in our draft, uh, which is draft Vinuku Rao, which I will refer to as draft on so that I don't butcher. Um, in that draft, we have defined all the terms that we are using and also described an overall overview of how that big picture sharing process works. Uh, so I hope everyone has had a chance to read sections one, two, three of our draft uh, to get a good idea there. Uh, that brings us to an important piece of that puzzle, which we term as relay server. And in this presentation, basically, I'm going to talk about relay server. So if we can go to next slide, please. So the requirements that we have identified for this relay server are the first and foremost requirement is to provide a bi-directional transport between the initiator device and the first recipient device 
The second requirement is to provide store and forward as th these two devices may not be online at the same time. Um, the third requirement is privacy related, which is the relay server shall not collect any identifying information about the users. And so is the fourth one where say, if I'm sharing multiple things using a relay server, there is no reason for that relay server to know that, that I'm involved in multiple mailboxes. And the fifth is a should requirement, which is a relay server should enable a seamless user experience because we think that it's crucial for adoption of this process. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so with that in mind, there are two uh, options on the table. One is our draft, the draft V, and other is the draft R. Again, I'm, I don't want to butcher last name, so I'm just going to go with draft V and draft R. Uh, and then I tried to compare these two drafts. Uh, there are lots, lots of similarities, which I'm not going to mention because uh, they are similar, something like TLS connection between the server and the client. Uh, we will focus on the differences between the two drafts. So from the security perspective, first item is the mailbox identifier uniqueness. In our draft, draft V, uh, the server generates the mailbox identifier and we have defined it as a UUID. So it's guaranteed that it is unique. In the draft R, the client is supposed to pick a random. So there is a possibility that there is a collision that maybe two Alice one and Alice two pick maybe the same random, so the same mailbox identifier. Second thing is the binding of initiator and recipient to a mailbox. Because as I mentioned earlier, this is essentially a pipe between initiator and the first recipient device. So there needs to be a binding between the two. Um, and in our draft, we achieve this binding by something called as device claim that the clients provide. In the draft R, uh, it's not clearly defined, but there is a possibility mentioned that it can happen with cookies. The third uh, item is, uh, if that mailbox identifier is known by multiple entities, in our draft V, uh, once a transfer is started, so once the initiator and the first recipient device are locked into a mailbox, no one else can monitor or disrupt that transfer, even if they know what the mailbox identifier is. But in the draft R, I do see a possibility that if you know that original mailbox identifier, you can monitor or even disrupt the transfer. Um, and then the last issue was on the security front is the lingering mailboxes. Uh, in our draft, we do request clients to clean up the mailboxes as they are done, but the server also guarantees cleanup on a periodic basis. And there is lifetime of the mailbox, so we'll clean that up. Uh, but the draft R doesn't mention any such requirement on the server. It is relying on clients uh, not crashing or getting disconnected before deletes. Uh, next slide, please. So just a quick point of order here. I think, th does it make sense to kind of go through um, each kind of slide? I mean, they're, they're basically separate issues and separate claims. So maybe it, it makes sense to kind of um, let people comment and ask questions on each slide. Either that, or we have to, or we go back and process questions at the end. But then we have to go back. So the, yeah, what, what um, do you think? I mean, uh, either is fine, but based on my past experience, uh, it would be better to go through the entire slides and then maybe come back. Uh, in case, uh, uh, all right. But in that case, I think we have to move it along fairly quickly, so we have actually have time to discuss everything. Right? Okay. I'll, I'll breeze through them. Next slide, please. On the privacy front, in the draft, we, we allow the user to pick what the mailbox identifier is. So the server only knows what the client tells it, and which is a UUID. Whereas in draft R, they are talking about using cookies, and cookies are well known for being able to track things. So. I see that as a concern. Uh, next slide, please. On the user experience front, uh, we are, uh, draft V is ingrained with the systems to provide notifications, which will provide a snappy user experience. And also, we, draft V is built to allow any uh, invitation channel that user wants to use. 
the confidentiality of transfer is not dependent on the invitation channel. That happens to be the case with draft R. Uh, next slide, please. And in terms of effectiveness, the basic function as a pipe between initiator and first recipient is achieved by that stable mailbox in our draft V and device claims, as I mentioned. In the draft R, I'm not exactly clear how that works because there is no single mailbox. It keeps changing per message. So I'm not exactly sure how the server will relate that this R2 actually is tied to an initiator and a recipient. And as I already mentioned, lifetime of mailboxes. And also, if there is a not just a turn taking flow, something like cancel, where you send a message and then send another message to cancel, our draft handles it well, whereas draft R may not work there. And uh, another possibility of uh, collision of mailbox identifier if that two messages are identical in our draft, it doesn't matter because they're going to separate mailboxes. In draft R, they may, might collide. And last slide, please. In terms of deployability, as I have mentioned, our server does most of the heavy lifting. The client impact is minimal. In terms of current deployments, there are deployed solutions in the car key vertical, and there are more in the pipeline. And uh, we see this, that our proposal is fairly easily extensible because you just have to essentially add new headers if needed. I guess that's it, so we can open it up. All right, then I think if you back back up to the first slide, I think we'll we'll go through because I, I think we're gonna get comment on all the slides. So uh Eric is in the queue. Go ahead. Yeah, some can people hear me? Yes. Good. It's unfortunate these weren't shared before because like these are largely false. Um and so if, if you tried these before, I would have an opportunity to point out that they're incorrect. So I'm just gonna start from the top. Um the Chance of collision in this case is roughly one, is at roughly two to the nine, not one, negative or 256. Um, so essentially every other IDF protocol, we routinely assume that randomly generated numbers um, a sufficient space do not collide. And this is a key security guarantee for essentially every cryptographic protocol we use. Um, and if it's not true, then you get collisions, for instance, um, in TLS keys or are uh, quick keys or IP set keys. And there's a far more serious problems than collision mailboxes, I was completely compromise the connection. So the suggestion like that hash collisions uh, present a serious uh, functional problem with any protocol, uh, the hash is sufficiently large, is just simply not reflective of modern ITF practice. Um, and not reflective of like any of like statistics in the situation. So I'm just gonna stop there on this on the first point if you want to argue with this one. You were breaking up a little bit, but what I is when I, I think I understood the argument. Let me take the try to kind of re, in, interpret what you said and reflect it back. I think the the, the point you're making is that um, randomness um, is an integral part of any ITF pr um, protocol, and the, the assumptions were that you were making in your draft isn't, isn't in any way different from like, for instance, the assum same assumptions that are made in TLS. So, um, and in, in fact, if I could just take off my chair hat, um, the the fact that you, Yogesh, you mentioned that you used UIDs in an, many implementations. That's also based on randomness. In which case, you have the same, basically, the same collision chances or risks, I should say. Uh, can I respond, or should I be in the queue? Uh, sorry, I, you you should just go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, the yes, it is both randomness, but in one case, it's multiple clients trying to be random to create an identifier, whereas a single entity in our case being random. As I mentioned, there is a chance of where there is a probability. In our case, that is way lower. And just because it's best practice to use randomness by various clients, if there is a better alternative, I would rather take it. I think you're missing the point entirely, which is if you cannot trust that randomly generated numbers are unique, then the entire security falls apart. It, okay, this is unfortunate. Um, I, I think you're breaking up a little bit, Eric. Yeah, this is like a problem with me. Is there somebody to turn off my video, your video? No, there isn't. So 
Um, uh, Eric, I've got Aaron in the queue after you. Do you want to, if, if, if you're fiddling around with your connection settings, maybe we can let Aaron. Um, uh, same problem. Aaron, why don't you try stepping up to the queue while Eric, uh, because I think you, you, you were also trying to clarify some, some of the same points. Yeah, hi, Aaron Precky. Um, I was just going to try to recap what Eric was trying to say, which is that if we can't trust clients, it, if we can't trust clients to independently generate random numbers and not collide, then basically everything about TLS and all the other specs fall apart. So that seems to be a sufficiently okay assumption in the current world that we can make. So the point, while while technically it's true that the uh, draft V is has a slightly lower chance of collision, it's not actually relevant at all because of how because of the assumptions we're already making about client generated randomness. Is that correct, Eric? You can just type in the chat. Yes, Eric says yes. Okay, great, thanks. All right, um, Eric, we've all face muted ourselves now, so let's see if that helps your bandwidth uh, situation, and maybe we can kind of go on. Um, my yeah. suggestion here is that we try to turn this into a free, more or less open discussion between um, uh, you, you and Yogesh on this slide, and then we can kind of open up for everybody else to respond, and then we can move to the Yeah, next. can people hear me now? Is this any better? It is better, yes. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, like as I said, if you can't trust randomness, the cryptography all falls apart. Um, the second um, the second point, um, this, is not a, this is not a functional requirement of the system. The functional requirement of the system is that only one person gets the, only one person gets the um, key, and that is provided by the draft we described. It does not require cookies, and I've explained this a number of times, so I'm not quite sure why it's so difficult to understand. But the situation is that as, for, as soon as the first person responds and deletes and deletes, um, as soon as the first person responds and deletes the, in, the initiation message from the server, then no one else can get in. And this also this apply, also applies to the second line, and neither of these require cookies. Um, so, um, um. I'm happy to explain why that's the case, but um, the, the TLDR is that the locations are random, and and you know no location of the next message. You need to know you need to receive the previous message, and so as soon as the first message is received and deleted, then no one else can can, can read out of that message or any subsequent message. And if I could just jump in on that, I, since I was the one who suggested the, the cookies uh, approach, uh, the session cookies approach. Um, that is an alternative way to do that. Uh, there's also a potential belt and suspenders approach where you can get uh, two layers of guarantee there. Um, but I agree with Ecker's uh, um, description that it's that property is already attained with with the design without cookies. So, uh, you guess if you disagree with this, we really should hash this out because this is a key. This seems to be the key security question of this, of this system. So if you really disagree with us, we should hash this out now. So that so cookies are suggested as a way to bind the initiator and recipient, right? Uh, They're so suggested as a suspenders mechanism that in addition to the existing security mechanism that is defined in the main draft would um would provide a second layer of protection, but is not necessary to provide the security guarantee. Then so, as a, as a just point of order, as chair, if you know, if if we don't actually need cookies for draft Rescola, can can we kind of put that aside and not discuss that? I think I think that's, that's entirely reasonable as the person that suggested the cookies approach. Uh, 
Okay, I mean, if we are ready to move on from cookies, then the third point is very valid in this case because without cookies, yes, the third point is incorrect. Hiding the as soon as soon as in both cases, the first person in both cases there's a race condition between the attacker and the receiver. And as long as the receiver wins, things are fine. As long as the attacker wins, things are not fine. Uh, that that there I disagree in draft R. Even if the receiver is first to go there, as long as the attacker knows R, they can know the entire sequence. They can read it. No, that's not that is not that, that is not correct. The addresses of the subsequent messages are accurate. If you know R and if and and basically to obscure. Yogesh, you're breaking up. Oh, okay. That, can I try again? Uh, so if the attacker knows R, they can get to all the messages by just being there at the right time. And that is our... No, that is not correct. I mean, they, they've won the race in that situation. I don't understand what you're saying. They, they race, but they prevent attacker in R. And then they can read subsequent messages because you just have to derive the next mailbox address from the R. So I don't see any mechanism that prevents. And I, I understand. Yeah, no, it, you're you're breaking up pretty bad. I, it, are you? Is is this a local issue? Um, a microphone issue, uh, Yogesh? Uh, like I don't know. Let me try with the microphone. sometimes when you start speaking, it's actually pretty good, pretty clear right now, and then you try, then it breaks off when you. Um... Okay, uh, I, I'll try again. Um, at least I mean the way I have read this draft, uh, I see that if an attacker knows R they can get to all the messages and there is nothing preventing that in the draft uh, and i guess if we have differing opinions maybe someone else can take a look and chime in yeah i'm sorry that's simply not correct the way the system works is that if the attacker learns are subsequent to the um subsequent to the receiver pulling the first message the attacker the attacker is not able to interfere with the connection it is of course able to do so if it learns it prior to the receiver getting in but that is the same race condition that your draft has uh that, that's actually not true in our draft the first recipient to lock in is the only one that gets messages because the server wouldn't let anyone else read it but in your draft even if the actual recipient read it, somebody else can read it too because they know the R. There is nothing preventing that. No, because no, because the receiver deletes it as soon as he's read it. Because and those are two separate operations, a read and a delete. So somebody reads it, uh, a person one reads it, and person two can read it before that second delete happens. There is nothing yeah. preventing that. Yes, so that is correct. Yes, okay. so that is so my point is accurate, and I think uh, we can move on to the next one so that we can get right. more discussion. <laughs> Uh, unless you can describe an actual security situation, an actual data. Okay, this is wrong in a number of ways. <laughs> so the first is that the, um, like any system like this is a two journalist problem, which is to say that either you have to, um, the, either you have to say that as soon as you think the thing has been read, before you before you can verify it's been read, then you then you lock it in, which is the draft. This way, yeah, I think you're proposing your draft works. Or you say that the receiver has to explicitly acknowledge it in order to in order, in order to lock it in, which is the way my draft works. But I don't understand why you think it's security relevant, and I really appreciate if you describe an attack as opposed to just keeping to repeat this, this point. I mean, I, I, is there anything in your draft that guarantees that after reading that R, it is locked? It's not. I mean, the client is supposed to delete it, and what if the client goes away, crashes? I mean, there are lots of scenarios where the client may not be able to issue delete right after. And then R is lingering around, which is also the next point in the slide here. Yeah, no, nothing prevents the client from issuing the delete immediately afterwards. In this, in fact, in the same message, in fact, in the subsequent, in the same TCP fixing connection. 
So, so in so in that case, if somebody else has R, they can read the entire conversation. That's the point. Right, okay, I really don't think this is accurate representing the situation. So um, I, guess, I guess this is your view, but I don't think it's accurate. But in that case, I'm happy to move on to the next point, which is that the um, that the this is the, the lingering mailboxes, first of all, are not a problem because they're simply 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 a um, this is simply consuming a very modest amount of space in the server. But second, nothing stops the server from having its own cleanup timeouts. I mean, uh, I would say lingering mailboxes are a problem because if somebody can go in later and actually read all the conversations that happen, uh, that is a concern. And uh, sure, servers can define a timeout, but it's not defined is the only thing that I'm pointing out. Well, I don't think it's difficult to define. I don't really think that the fact that we have it defined is a problem. Um, and as I, st as I stated already, I don't think you're describing the situation, security situation accurately. I, I think that is it. We can, I think, go on to the next slide. Well, actually, before, before we go to this slide, I just want to make sure that everybody, there's nothing, any nobody else who wants to kind of speak to any of the points in, on the first slide. Uh, and I see Aaron jumping in here, so. Uh, I, I don't, I didn't want to revisit the, the previous slide, but I actually had, I was skipping ahead in this, in the slides. And can I suggest that we discuss something on the last slide instead, which is current deployments? Um, I, I don't see any problems if nobody else has a problem with that. So, I feel like picking apart the, the, I, the I, point isn't terribly I, useful at the moment without sort of larger context. I am okay with it. No, so. Go go ahead, Aaron. Uh, no, I just wanted to to get more detail on this, I guess. So the current deployments, the 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 statement here is that it is currently deployed. It, the the solution described in this draft me is currently deployed. Is that accurate? And and how widely and like can we get some details on on that? Uh, that is that is indeed accurate. Um, there is a. Con Vertic, the, the thing that we call vertical, it's a consortium called Car Connectivity Consortium, which they have standardized the digital car key and the sharing methods. And currently there are a handful of car manufacturers who allow people to create a digital car key on the device and also share it. And a handful of handset manufacturers, as we call them, or uh, device manufacturers, they are actually, they have uh, deployed this solution, implemented and deployed. and we are actually sharing keys um, right now for like last uh, more than two years, I would say. I feel like that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big deal. I guess I would like to kick it back to the chairs to 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 discuss that because I feel like the conversation around should we adopt a draft that has current deployments versus should we pick from two clean slate drafts is a very different discussion. Well, I, I think that's a reasonable point. I frankly like to hear from these verticals, um, which we have not yet, um, but to get their perspective on how, how much they like this draft um, before we assume that, um, that, 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 that the handset manufacturers speak for them. So some of the uh, people are Okay, go ahead. Yogesh, sir, I just wanted to add that uh, this is Alham. Uh, I work with a different team, um, in a different team with Yogesh. It is beyond car manufacturers. We are using them also in scooter key solution, um, in uh, multifamily home. So it is just more than digital car key. So I just wanted to emphasize that. And it is currently deployed and used in production. Go ahead, Yogesh. Uh, thank you, Elham. Uh, I guess I missed the other verticals. Uh, and there are some people from, I guess, Car Connectivity Consortium on this meeting right now. So if somebody wants to speak up, that would be a great time. Uh, 
Right. Should we go back and walk through the slides? Um, I think we were, we, we took a trip back to the last, uh, oh, somebody entered the queue here. Is that on this topic or? Uh, yeah, this is Matthias, uh, also from Apple. Um, I just want to point out there are a few people from Apple speaking, but to be really, really transparent, uh, it's a solution that is supported by, as Yogesh already has said, just want to underline that, uh, many other device OEMs in the Android world, um, and uh, also many uh, companies that are working together with these uh, with these um, device <clears throat> OEMs, it's a real cross-functional setup that is deployed, right? And not only for 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 automotive, it's there are also other domains where it's already in use, cross-functional or cross cross-functional or cross-platform in the sense that it's going from Apple to Android, between Android, different Android devices, and vice versa. So um, that is why we think. Uh, IETF is the right place uh, to make that a standard, right? And coming to 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 say that clearly in for the for the uh, ongoing discussion, um, and we actually I I thought and we all thought that it's known to the group. It comes a bit as a surprise that this was not so clear, but so we want to make that really clear. Uh, it has already proven uh, in the field. To work well, uh, no known attacks, etc. So we think it's worth contributing that uh, to to the group and maybe base uh, a future release on on this design. That was so, uh, the idea. All right. Before, thank you, Matthias. I want to kind of step in, sort of, with my chair hat uh, here at this point because there is a. This is a. Um, it's not an, an uncommon situation for the ITF, right? And and. Um, you have a fairly well sort of understood and deployed solution that involves uh, a, a, um, a certain sector or maybe even multiple sectors. And I, I, I've been, I myself been in that situation of trying to kind of promote um, solutions like this into the ITF. The, the, the thing is that the ITF is, is not, um, the, it, it's not necessarily the venue to, um, to use a very common vernacular phrase, rubber stamp solutions. Um, if if Apple and and Android have a, a, a working relationship already, where you manage to deploy a, a solution, doesn't necessarily um, necessitate the involvement of an international standards organization. Um, the um, the assumptions when or the the, the, the Discussion we had in the both when we, we sort of went into this was that um, the uh, various verticals would eventually appear, right, and that a this first version of of a solution would more well, I, I don't want to use the word morph, but evolve into something that had sort of internet scale deployability and had um, wide adoption across uh, not just the handset ecosystem across multiple ecosystems. Um, and so far, um, we have, the, all of those other interested parties have, 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 haven't have appeared. They're not here, um, which makes this a very um, kind of iffy proposition for the ITF, right, to, con to continue this work. Um, the process we're in here, uh, looking at the alternative um, solutions um, is kind of part of the natural evol evolution of a protocol in the ITF. And it also is part of the security analysis of a, of a protocol in the ITF. Um, and, and so far, I, I can kind of see, a, I can see a big problem here as a chair. And I'm pretty sure if the ADs were here, I don't know that they're here, they would probably agree with me in saying that it is a, it's a, it's bad practice for the IETF to um, to have a situation where you have a, a, a lot of active security analysis that um, isn't being sort of discussed other than by the um, exactly the same organizations who promoted the, 
the protocol in the first place. Uh, to put it mildly, if if it's just Apple and Google, you don't actually need us here. Um, so the deployability of the standard is interesting, but I'm also still looking for where are all the car manufacturers, where are all the hotel chains, where are all of the other um, actors that, um, or where are all of the new actors in this space? Sorry for taking up a lot of time, but I think that needed to be said. And, and if we want to go back to, to a review of the comparison, I think we should kind of go back to um, the second slide, because I think that's where we were when we took a trip back to the deployability question, unless somebody wants to continue that discussion. We have a few people in the queue, Leif. Uh, I think Sue, the first one yeah yeah I, I just want to offer uh idea uh, especially i think in this group uh, for those who may want to get a bit more information about this deployment thing uh and how ccc is actually using uh, the draft uh to for implementation uh, I would suggest that I offer that uh, IETF can set up a liaison with CCC or I, we can also request CCC to set up a liaison. Uh, if, if folks want to get more details about the deployment, uh, about uh, the car and how to use it, I think it's certainly possible to set up that liaison uh, so that what to, to really speak about uh, what people has done, the work in terms of deployment. Uh, it's all real, it's all uh, in the market, people already use it. Uh, I think it's important to understand, to factor in that important uh, criteria as well. Thanks. So, Sue, so just to kind of get back on, on that, um, liaison relationship with the ITF is a, is a thing unto itself. It's an IAB thing, it's not, our, it's a, not in our uh, uh, wheelhouse in a working group. Um, oh, that, that's fine. I, I'm just but, wondering. I, I, I'm, not, I understand. I'm not. Yeah. But I will say what would be even more important is to have representatives from CCC join the ITF working group, the Tigers working group, provide feedback on all of the discussions we're having here and to do review of drafts. If you did that, it would be much easier for us in, for the ITF to make a judgment call about sort of how kind of widely distributed is this, how important this is, how how hard would it be to change various aspects of the protocol. Um, it, the, the ITF is being asked to take and have actually taken ownership control of this protocol. And that means you actually have to do the work inside of ITF, not through liaison uh, relationships. Thank you. I think Bradford is next. Okay. Oh, sorry, I uh, was trying to keep up with the notes. Um, I think it was Mateus that said that um, y'all thought it was best to specify this protocol in the IETF. Um, I'm curious as to why that is. Like, why not just specify this in the CCC? Uh, yeah, so maybe I can speak to that. Um, CCC only covers. Uh, Automotive uh, uh, yeah, keys or connectivity. So everything else, all other verticals that Elhammer has mentioned, uh, are not at all covered by CCC. So we think there is a, a an interest to have that protocol uh, widely used, right, across any other standard, because there is either vertical-specific standards <coughs> or no standard at all, right, for hotel chains or whatever there is no standard right and um coming back to your question why don't apple and google just make it out uh, on their own this is exactly what we don't do not want uh because i mean uh we we have come up with something that works well and we think it should become a standard and it's not about rubber stamping i'm 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 really uh don't agree with that it's about contributing something to ITF and then 
uh, I mean, it has been contributed already since a while. Have there been already security analysis and everything you were talking about? So the expectation would be that IETF picks that up, maybe has a different proposal and, uh, and comes up with, with, with the best solution. Um, I, I still think you, you, you're not in like you're not operating in a vacuum. There is real interest uh, of deploying that. There, it could be a different solution, but there is. I, I'm not sure if there is any justification to do things completely differently with no proven additional value uh, for completely undefined future potential deployments, where we, as you say, no one has manifested interest. So it's an open question. I just try to to get a bit to the point uh, to see is, is that a, a way that could go forward to take something and make it like a big standard, not forgetting that um, it already works and uh, there's an interest to make it better, but not just do, do it completely differently by achieving the same let's say the same security level and same usability level. Um, so I, let me again put on my, not take off my chair hat and, and offer kind of a, a perspective of what the working group has been doing over the last couple of months. And that is to, what, what Eric has done, right, is, is he's offered up an alternative way to look at the, the basic requirements. Um, and the question draft Rescola is asking, at least this is again, just my personal view, right? Is, is it possible to do this in a completely different way that is much simpler? Um, and um, that offers the same level of protection, but has like you know, a, a radically lower sort of complexity, less complexity. Um, and that that's kind of what, what um, Eric and, and um, um, and Brad has been working on. Now, does that mean that there, there is necessarily a competition between the two drafts? Not necessarily, but there is, I think, the need to do like objective review um, of the two drafts and objective comparison. And what we, I think, and again, putting on my chair hat back on, I say what I've seen as chair is, is has kind of, I, I haven't seen kind of that, um, um, strive towards objective review, right? Doesn't mean necessarily mean we need to replace everything, right? But at least we need to have like a, a detached and objective assessment of the requirements. And it, it is worrying to me as chair that we're still at that level in a working group that's been working for, for quite a while. The, Secure deployment or wide deployment or not is kind of beside the point at this point. If we can't even have an objective discussion about the requirements, I think Yagesh is in queue. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, if I if I may jump in, I think. This slides is basically at least the first attempt to actually compare those drafts uh, as objectively as possible, right? And as I have pointed out, if you go back to the effectiveness slide, uh, the draft R is not actually more simpler or anything. In fact, it's more complicated and more confusing than the draft V. Uh, I mean, I would definitely encourage people to read both the drafts and keep that in mind to see if, what compares. I, I feel I have to get in the queue again. Um, you know, um, more complicated, less complicated. I think it's kind of a matter of opinion. Um, you know, um, the um, uh, um, you know, I, I guess my view is like having a whole basically REST API on the server um, in order to say quite simple is like really not that fortunate, and it's not clear to me that it actually is simpler on the client. Um, I, I'd like to take a step back though and talk about the um, you know the selection process here. Um, you know, I, I certainly agree that like having like broad deployment actually is like an important consideration. Um, um, but um, and I miss some of what Leaf was saying. Um, you know, but like um, you know, um, uh, and, and and I think certainly like if we have a broad constituency of like vendors from the verticals who like think that like the current thing is great, 
um, and want to refine the ITF, that seems like totally reasonable. Um, but if what we have is actually like a couple of handset vendors of, um, who are, say they're representing the verticals, um, and there's not a lot of interest in refining the ITF, and there's not a lot of participation in verticals, then it's not really clear to me what the ITF is doing here. So like, I really don't like object to like taking the existing draft if we're going to have as a real working group. But I do think it's like, but I, but I, I'm quite a little concerned as as Leith indicated with the situation we have now, now, which is we don't see much of a working group, and we have an existing draft and a bunch of claims that has deployed. So, um, and and that's the spirit in which I offered um, a new alternative because I thought that like the design was better. But I, I don't just losing that, that that argument. But um, but but I, I think we lose that argument if we're going to like really move forward in a meaningful way. And and so I'm also concerned about that. And I, I like to say one more thing. I think if we are going to do um, uh, uh, try to do an objective analysis of between these two drafts, um, this um, set of slides is not a reasonable basis for that analysis to happen. Um, and analysis has to actually be based on consensus discussion, not on one person's opinion, which I think we've established is somewhat disputed. All right. Um, I still want to make sure that we um, have time to make comments on a few of the points. If there is interest to do that, we have about, a f about another 15 minutes. So we can spend a few more minutes on that. Um, yeah, uh, a few points, um, I guess. Um, um, I, I think I think these points are a little more reasonable. I sort of agree with some of them, some, not others. Um, this first point, I don't Think is correct. Um, so, um, I, for, for reasons that I, if I, if I someone write up what the issue is, I'm sure I could respond to it. Um, the second point, I think, um, I, I agree. This, I agree. Like that, my draft is kind of vague in a lifetime. I don't think lifetime issues are very important. But if people think a lifetime is important, it wouldn't be hard to specify numbers, um, and it wouldn't be smart to specify like a header or something that, that manages that. Um, as I sort of mentioned, I'm sort of reluctant to add a lot more behavior to the server because I think having behavior on the server is bad. But like, so you could do something. Um, this third point, like, yeah, I think this third point is like totally reasonable. Um, like, if um, I don't remember it being a requirement for like um, multiple messages from one server, one one and the other, um, um, certainly it would not be difficult to make that work um, in the design I proposed. But I agree, my design does not have to cover that. Um, um, this um, this last point is of course wrong for the same reasons um, as I was indicating previous calculations. Um, if you go back to the privacy slide, I think the privacy. Slide now we're taking my fence because we're not tracking our cookies. It would be wrong anyway, but it's double wrong because we're not talking about cookies. So yeah, all right. So we're not going to make the point that cookies aren't a tracking mechanism in this in this context. I mean, they're not absolutely. Um, but like, even if they were, we would table for now. So okay. Sorry, can you repeat that? It was hard to hear Eric and sure. Brad, what they said. Sure. So, so I think we already suggested that we weren't really going to talk about cookies in this conversation because the design doesn't require it. But um, even if they we were going to require cookies, um, it's perfectly possible to like separate the two contexts from multiple exchanges um, so that the cookies don't um, link up. And this is what like browsers do all the time for like for like um, cookie isolation. So there's not a privacy problem in this, in this situation. So, so to make a comment, just to understand, if there are no cookies in the draft R, then it is only restricted to using end-to-end -end channels as the invitation channel. Is that accurate? No, that is not correct. Because uh, I thought cookies were supposed to prevent against uh, uh, not end-to-end -end encrypted channels so that even if the R is leaked, something can be done about it. Um, yeah, I regret there's still this misunderstanding. I, I really think what we need to do, um, chairs, um, is um, to the extent to which we're voting or deciding on the basis of the deployment, like, I, I, I freely concede that like the design that um, draft V um, will work. I don't think it's very good, but like, I've conceded it will work. So if we're voting purely on deployment and on these tactical issues, then we can like ignore all these tactical points and move on. But if we're going to make a decision based on these tactical points, then I really do think we actually need to sit down and work through this um, this this, que this security question that Yash is raising and that he and I were arguing about previously. Because um, it's clearly a quite strong difference of opinion. And I think that like 
it would be important for the working group to actually sit through that as opposed to kind of like have something, have something written down with like arrows and like, you know, boxes and arrows and stuff and flow diagrams and exactly what can happen when and like get consensus on that um, rather than sort of like debate at the microphone like we're doing here with kind of no prep. Um, so as I say, if we're going to decide based on my popularity of like current deployments, then like we don't need to have that conversation because I agree this thing works. Um, but if we're going to decide based on technical merit, then we really do need to have to like not make a decision here and actually sit down and write a document. Noted. Um, Matthias, you were in the queue. Uh, yes, live. Um, one question. I, so I think I joined uh, today and probably many other participants joined today because we were thinking that we take a decision today between uh, the two drafts and which one to, uh, to move forward. Is that something that is, that is doable? Um, first of all, decisions like that are based on working group consensus in the ITF. And um, working group consensus is very, very iffy to determine on an in at an interim meeting. Uh, if, if we were to do that kind of consensus call, um, we would do definitely do it on the mailing list, not in a meeting like, th like this. Um, I think that we got to, I think there's, it's not, as chair, I, I don't think we're actually looking at a, a binary situation here. I think we're looking at um, two or three possibilities. Um, one possibility is a, a, a joint working group redesign of the protocol, kind of that targets maybe other properties than the one that the initial uh, proposals have. Maybe it looks like a, a, um, um, a an evolving draft V or draft R. I, it, I don't know. Right? That's one option for the working group. Another option for the working group is to say, all right, no, no, we're, we're going to do draft V only um, because we have a, a, a lot of support for draft V. Now, I think that the current makeup of the working group does not afford us to make that decision in the ITF because it's basically just Apple here and, and a couple of Google people. That's certainly not, not, not enough, not nearly enough for the ITF. Please. Yes. Today, you're speaking about today. Sorry to interrupt. In the in general, active participants in the working group. If I look at the mailing list and the activity on the mailing list, what's your proposition? Like, what's your proposition then to move my forward? Pro what what I what would have to happen for the ITF? I mean, the, again, I was back at my list, right? My list is we can we can go ahead and do a working group redesign. Um, the other option is we can say that draft V is what we want to. Uh, pursue, but in order to do that, the ITF would, act, would actually have to demonstrate consensus um, and an engagement from from a much broader range of companies than we have seen in the working group today. I think today, if we were to take this uh, tra draft V or um, some future sort of version where we've done some minor editorial e edits or whatever. Take to take that to the ISG. They would never allow us to publish because we haven't demonstrated ITF consensus. It would be a very very weak consensus. The the way if if the industry wants draft V to to progress, you actually have to send a lot more representatives from different companies and different industries to not only say hey we want this thing but actually participate in the work. And so far we haven't seen that. The only thing we've seen is a discussion between um, the only other active participants, and that's Eric and, and, and Bradford. Uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, and this is not how we do things in the ITF. Yeah, a lot of this work has already happened before. Right? But And then, again, you don't need the ITF. You don't need us. This is not how the ITF works. I mean, there are two, two different things. It's not how the ITF works. I mean, there we, we need to see what the, what the way of progressing is. But isn't the IT, ITF, I mean, I don't want to start a basic discussion there or a fundamental discussion, but isn't the ITF just uh, a consult, uh, like a standards org organism that standardizes across verticals? Right? And yes, not well, if those verticals are, are actually present, but they're not. They're not here. 
I, I, we don't even have people responding to kind of basic review solicitations on the working group, mailing list. It's Yogesh and one or two other people, and it's Eric and Bradford. So that's it. We, we, we have, it, it's extreme, it's anemic. And we can't, like, this is not how, it, I can push, I can, as a chair, me and Prachi, we can just go ahead and say, all right, we're done, we sign off on the, on the work, but it would never progress to the ISG. Our job is to demonstrate rough consensus and running code. You got the running code bit, but we have, we're not nowhere near to demonstrate rough consensus. I have a hard can, time to, I can, mean, yeah. So, yeah, so, so, yeah, sorry, so try to cut the kill. I, I, I try to understand um, uh, when the chair says that, hey, there's only few people that participate in, in this work. Uh, and you cannot claim there is a consensus because we need more people from different, let's say, industry or company that are participating. Uh, now, assuming the trend continues to go like that, what would happen to this work? Because clearly, as you said, we only have the working a few group people. would get closed down. Well, closed down. Okay. Yes, the working Got group. It. I think that's. A, I think given uh, our current state of progress, the ISC. I would be. I'm kind of surprised they haven't talked to us about that already. Okay. Okay. Got it. If if there is no active participant more than what the currently. Uh, appear in the group, uh, then the the plan is to close down this group. I, I, I don't want to use, I think the pl plan is a bad word here. I think it's the inevitable result. Okay, I, I use inevitable result because you- It is the inevitable result. And the, the yeah. reason for that, it's historic, right? The ITF is kind of wary about one or two vendors sort of coming in with a more or less baked standard and then having, it doesn't mean that you have to change stuff. I want to be very clear about that. I think Eric I, I, made it I, I, also clear. You don't have to change a word in a standard, but you have to have people here, a diverse set of people who actually review stuff and say, yeah, this is good because. And we're uh, not saying. I, I understood, understood. I, I just want to see, because you clearly make the comment about uh, not enough people. If the trend continue, uh, the likelihood, the end results as you call inevitable results will be to dissolve or disband this group. Correct. Thank you. So I had I have Jogesh and Aaron. I, I don't know if you're you want to remain in the queue, Sue. Or... Um, oh, I actually you. had the same question that Sue Jogesh. was going yes. to ask. So yeah, I, I actually was going to ask the same question as Sue was going to ask and uh, he asked it. And I, I just have one more question that the Charter that we have defined, it's very broad, as I have mentioned in several emails, and it doesn't exactly reflect the problem as well. So maybe that needs to be addressed as well. But as you mentioned, if the group is heading towards the outcome that you mentioned, I guess uh, it becomes a moot point. I'll give it to Aaron. Yep. I just wanted to, to wrap up with like what, what is a path forward here? Because I think the big thing I'm hearing is there's not enough participation from other people other than one or two organizations. So can we make a plan to actively recruit feedback from other organizations? In particular, the people from Apple, if you have relationships with people in these other companies, can you ask them to show up to the mailing list or show up and actually speak? Because I think I think Leif is absolutely correct that we're really only hearing a couple of voices. Indeed. And I, I, just to be very clear about this, I, I think we need a little bit more than just a raised hand. Yep. Sue or, or Aaron, one of you or want to speak, I think. I think, yeah. I think um, it's great that, that like, I see a lot of people on the call here who I haven't seen before. That's great. Um, so I think people will probably need suggestions about what kind of feedback they can provide and what are some specific next steps they can take to demonstrate 
that that um, that interaction. So, the Leaf or Prachi, do you have any suggestions for like very concrete next steps somebody can take to keep this going? I think the concrete suggestion that you provided, Aaron, is the is the right one, um, and it's, it it is actually one that I um, that we talked to um, to the contributors like from the first day of the both, right? Like let's get all of those other contributor companies in here to to help out with this. In fact, I actually tried to recruit Asa Abloy because I had a suspicion that the the, the key manuf lock manufacturers would be interested in this, and for some various reasons, they didn't have time. And they didn't kind of, they were aware of the work, didn't sort of express enough interest. Um, but yeah, that that is the way to do it. So we're at time. Um, so anybody from like Sue, Matthias, Yagesh, anybody wants to take this as an action step that you want to go and recruit people from other verticals or other interested parties to come and contribute? Well, I, I, I think there are a couple of things as I think uh, that has said, right? So there are people who may be interested, they just do not have the bandwidth and resources. Uh, this is very unfortunate, but this is, uh, I think, true for many people, many organizations, unfortunately. Uh, I think giving feedback via email, I don't know whether, uh, but I, I think people already committed to some of the work or implementation. Uh, if this is the information that I think this group wants to hear, certainly we can encourage people who have uh, interest in implementing uh, to, you know, maybe sh at least show their interest to, to the group, right? But again, it, it could be difficult as well. One has to understand some member company may, may not want to go and even disclose what they have in plan, but they will be willing to show their support. Like, hey, I really like this, this, this draft versus the other draft. They can raise their hand right, without disclosing more information. But I heard that Lev says that, yeah, this is not what I want. I, I can understand the logic, right? Uh, but I, I think there is, it's a very difficult questions to to uh, to provide. So let me be clear about sort of what, what constitutes rough consensus in the ITF, right? That is, it's kind of, sometimes it's kind of hard to judge, right? But what we, what you typically do as chair, you look at the review activity around the draft, right? How many have read it? How many have left comments on it? How many have sort of said, I read it, I think it's good. I read it, I think it's good, but you know, change this comma here, right? It's this, it, we're looking for signs of active engagement and cons expressions of consensus around the draft. That's what we're looking for, right? Um, and it, if, if we have a, a situation where you know, a, and again, this is not the first time, this is not the first rodeo we've had in the ITF where, where people, groups bring work into the ITF and say, this is widely deployed already, but there's really no kind of resources to work on it um, and we're done. That effectively takes it out of the running for an ITF protocol. Lev, I, I, I don't disagree with you. I think uh, one, one thing that I want to maybe, I, I think uh, early on, I think uh, Matthias may have mentioned that. I think that's true in general, right? Uh, this particular draft, uh, you can say it as a draft in ITF, but this is what has been, I think, uh, discussed uh, in other forum. Pretty extensively, people review it. Uh, their security team internally look into it. Everyone is comfortable. That's what uh, people wants to implement it, right? So uh, putting the same exercise, uh, because this is not, you have to go back to those people who go and review and, and go and join IT for the same uh, thing. Uh, it's not the best use of their resources as well, right? So I, I understand where the difficulty from from IETF perspective, from the process side, 
but I think uh, we have to acknowledge that uh, for people who already uh, committed and already review it uh, by their respective team internally, coming to IETF again to do pretty much the same thing again uh, and ask them to review and it, it, it may not best use of their time too. If I may suggest, it, what sounds like what you're saying is that um, CCC members have uh, spent some time looking at this. If that's the case, having them chime in with their reviews and retrospectives could be useful. But more specifically, what is alluded to is the reason for bringing this to the ITF is to use it in other verticals. And presumably, those other verticals were not part of the CCC and did not do that work prior. So that would be where they could do that work in the IETF. Well, first, I I do not know uh, the uh, whether the other vertical will be willing to come at the same discussions like I mentioned, right? Uh, the second thing I I think is also important, right? Now, uh, if we continue to discuss, right now. Uh, I heard you guys uh, mention that, hey, we want to get as many as other verticals to come forward. Uh, if there is no other verticals to come forward, again, what should we do with this group? I think if other verticals are not willing to put in the work, then that argues that there is not the interest to pursue an IETF protocol. So again, the, uh, the inevitable, inevitable outcome is to disband this group. More or less. I, I think what you could do is you could take the current uh, draft Vinokov and sort of do an, an individual submission and a, and a sort of go ask for an individual track submission. Then it's published as an informational. This that, that has been done by, by other uh, companies in similar situations. There's the famous negotiate protocol for for Kerberos on the on HP for using Kerberos with HTTP that was Kind of fairly widely deployed, actually, but never, um, never documented other than in an IRF, in an informational RFC. Um, so it, that could be done. Um, okay, that that is a it, good it suggestion, Lev. Uh, because that is, because not, I, that is not actually that's, an IETF concern. Yeah, I, I I I'm sorry to cut you off, but I mm -hmm. I, I think this Tigris group I think has been in operation for already some time. Yes. Um, right. So I and as 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 I mentioned, if 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 it's already been some time, there are no other vertical people that who may be interested in in implementing and come to this group uh, for some time already. I think maybe we can make that fair assumption is that no one has the bandwidth to come and support the work. Uh, yeah. If this this group is disband, what you suggest maybe one way to move forward uh, as well. I'm sorry, I, take, I I noticed that we are well over time. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Uh, we, we are over time um, and leave it to drop. I think I think this connection got cut. OK, so we'll um, we'll talk with the 80s and uh, we'll drop the next steps on the e mailing list. I think there needs to be a serious discussion around with the 80s uh, for the path forward for Tigris. So uh, to stay tuned, uh, we'll drop something on the mailing list soon with the next steps. Uh, but thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.